the east of Athens, heading up the Gulf of Corinth, is the Mesolonghi Lagoon, the biggest in Greece and full of natural resources to exploit. Here you simply have to reach out your hand to gather the fruits of the water. Beyond the white gold of the salt marshes, the lagoon and its beaches stretch right up to the Ionian Sea. This part of Greece, and this part of the world, is home to farmers and small-scale livestock breeders. Ioannis leaves his herd of cattle to roam freely in this maritime landscape. There's not much grass this year. Because there's no rain, I have to feed them every day. In summer, the animals are here. And in winter, they're in the mountains. Then, at the end of the year, I sell them and they go to the slaughterhouse. Yanis, is that enough for you to make a living? I fish, too. Because of the recession, Yanis has also been fishing over the past two years. With each tide, thousands of fish migrate from the Ionian Sea towards the warmer waters of the lagoon. This natural fish farm offers a resource that has been ignored for too long. For 10 days each month, Yanis leaves home and comes here to fish. Hello, Stavros. How are you doing? Everything is fine. Special. Give us a hand. Great. Here's some dishwashing liquid. Yanis and Stavros are part of a cooperative with 16 other fishermen. Those are baby mullet. It's very easy to fish here, because the fish naturally swim into the traps. When the tide is high, we block it with a piece of wood. And the fish can't get out. They can't get through. This trapping technique was inspired by the ancient Greeks. That way, no fisherman ever went home empty-handed. When the bucket is full, I'll call the wholesaler to sell it. We don't feed the fish here. Everything is natural. It's not a fish farm. Let's go. We've got fish to prepare. Yanis and his associates pay 30,000 euros to the Greek state every year for the right to fish in the lagoon. Hey, Nikos, what are you cooking up for us? Ah, uh, our traditional goat stew. 
Great. You're working hard. I'll do the fish. We pay the rental on this house, the right to fish here, and the money left over is divided up between us. For now, the fishermen in the lagoon have yet to turn a profit. Their investment is a gamble on the future. Their days are guided by the tides and fishing times. A ritual disturbed only very infrequently by the occasional visitor. Hi. How are you boys doing? Are you a mechanic now? We do everything here. If we don't repair it, we have to go on foot. <laughs> Petros is one of their customers. He left Athens, the recession, and his job as a journalist to set himself up as a producer of Greek caviar, known as putarg. It's made using mullet roe. The season hasn't begun yet, but as you sort them, you can already see some little eggs. She's a female. The eggs are yellow, so that means it's a female. That one's bigger. Last year was a terrible year. We're hoping this one will be better for everyone. These eggs are the hidden treasure of the lagoon. Misolongi mullet eggs produce the most highly prized putarg in the country, but it only appeals to Greeks. Petros has decided to try to boost its international profile. Spiros, part of this order is going to France, the other is going to Athens, and we're still waiting for an answer from the Japanese customer. Once the mullet row is mature, it looks completely different. Black caviar, sturgeon caviar, costs 5,600 euros a kilo. And Greek putag costs 140, 150 euros. So our treasure isn't as pricey as all that. How's it going here? Fine. Once it has been salted and dried, the putag is coated in beeswax to protect it. You remove the wax before eating the putarg in thin slices as an aperitif or grated on pasta. There you go. This is where I think I'm bringing a little more money in. No, I, I'm proud. This putarg is like a piece of my country traveling around the world. During a recession, the ones who really go for it are the ones that succeed. Our treasure is the sea, and the Greeks have always lived off the sea. It's as simple as that. The lagoon is like an open-air treasure trove, and it's very attractive to some. There are a lot of thieves here. Really a lot. Every night, the fishermen take turns to patrol until dawn. I'm not going to waste my evening staring at the TV and listening to the Prime Minister while the thieves help themselves. I prefer to be outside. There's the sea. It's not cold. The moon is up. And everything is beautiful. Oh, 
What would you do if you discovered a thief? I'd call the police. And then my partners would block the roads to trap them, and we'd hunt them down until we found them. Damn it, I can't see a thing. How am I supposed to spot the thieves? Now I'm going to prick up my ears like a Doberman. Good night. But morning brings disappointment. What's wrong, Stavros? Somebody was here. There are footprints there. Someone was here. If you come here, you must be a thief. Because we pay to fish here. And when the thieves take half of my fish, what's left for me? I'm just left here whistling. This year is critical for Yanis, Stavros, and the other fishermen from the cooperative. They need to break even. To them, the sea represents hope. To others, it's a philosophy. that was the birthplace of one of the fathers of mathematics, Pythagoras. The port that bears his name is located on the island of Samos, just one kilometer from the Turkish coast. Pythagoras left his theory as a gift for the entire world. Here, his theory that everything can be measured has become a philosophy. You need measure in everything. Hold on, untie it. Pull the boat and give me the end. Action and give. Eh, I don't like big things. I don't like big boats. I like this boat and I love it. It's my size, I control it. And uh, it's enough for me. Pascalis, who looks disturbingly like Captain Haddock, is quite a character around the port. He lives off the sea. In the winter, he fishes on his traditional wooden boat. And in summer, he takes tourists on day trips. Bye bye. Let's go, let the ship sail. Push. 
Push, come on. Everybody out. Come here. Come here. Come on. They're coming more, but today they're not here. Yanis has taken Dimitri under his wing. He is teaching the young ship's boy his trade and his philosophy on life. Dimitri needs to learn to respect and love the sea. The sea is one of the three scourges created by nature. Fire, the sea, and women. And if you don't respect any of them, you're done for. I need to look after the barbecue now. Ten hours of labor for Yanis. For the tourists, it's a day at sea with as much barbecued food and drink as they like. For around 30 euros, it's all about a measured approach. The money is never enough, so you better don't get spoiled and don't have a lot. Because you can have a good time with not so much money, you see. I know poor people who have a better life than the rich people. And I'm one of them. I'm not poor, but I'm not rich. I'm rich in my head. If I wanted to be a millionaire, I could be. But it's not necessary. What do they want, fish, fish. or meat? Fish, please. Fish? Bravo. Bravo. Next, please. Next, please. Everybody come to Papa. Yanis has a faithful clientele, dedicated fans even. This is the 80th time this Norwegian holidaymaker has been on the boat. It's the atmosphere the captain creates on the boat that does it for us. It puts everyone in a good mood. Yanis had his boat built at the western tip of Samos, at the boatyard of St. Isidore. He decides to take us there. It's a three-hour drive in this mountainous landscape to reach what feels like the other side of the world. This here is the wild pine tree, so you can see we are driving in, a, in almost a jungle. You can see trees hundreds of years old. And uh, this part of Samos is the best pine trees for building boats. The builders of the boat it's our, it's kind of our parents, you know, because they built the boat for us to go and work. So we, we really love them, we appreciate them. The man who built Yanis's boat died a long time ago, but the captain often comes to visit his successors, Yanis and his son, Vagelis. How are you? Fine, and yourself? Long time no see. Hey man, how are you? How many meters is it? It's an eight meter. You see? 
everything is handmade. This is called corking. This is cotton between the woods. Because the wood in the summer it's drying and it opens. Uh, in the winter time when it sucks water, it closes the hole everywhere, all over, to make sure that the boat is not leaking water. It's what I learned to do as a child, and I'm going to carry on. You mustn't give up because the craft would die with you. These boat construction techniques haven't changed since the Byzantine era. Yanis and Vagelis live far away from everything. They don't earn much, but they have three orders on the books. This afternoon, they're going to launch a 10-meter boat, a Trehandeli. Fifty pieces of wood, three months of work, down to the smallest detail. This is our signature, this little fish that we carve onto each boat we build. That says it comes from our boatyard. Master Yanis, you have made a beautiful boat. Ilias, the new owner, has bought himself this traditional fishing boat for pleasure. It cost him 25,000 euros. I made my little contribution to ensure this art continues here. This boat will withstand anything. Even in the middle of a storm, if the captain is in control, it will stay afloat. Vangelis, put the last plank here. Isn't that enough? No, take one and put it there. Many former boatyard workers have come. Launching a new boat is always an exceptional moment. Hello, Father. We need your blessing before we can launch her. So we may have safe travels and that the Virgin protects us. Father, don't forget the cabin. Be a good captain. The Santa Maria, full of grace, may now be launched. Let's go! They were tree trunks, and now they're a boat. In a breath, you've brought it to life. It's very emotional, because it took all that time to create it. This is just the beginning for me. I'm going to build many more boats, many more. Because in this country, we will never live without boats. Bon voyage! Hey. Goodbye, Master Yanis!
The Greeks inherited their sea so long ago. It is not always very generous, but it provides the essentials of their wealth. Thank mm -hmm. you.